So, Ed, tell me, tell me a little bit, how do you see games distributed right now? I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference in publishers. Yeah. But, like, I mean, obviously it, you know, the platforms funny. dictate they, they, that, right? We, we will talk about publishers. This is important because I think unlike the film industry, your industry, is that there are times where you can be your own publisher. When you see this list, the more expensive those games are, the more risk associated with it, frankly, you better be walking in with like a big IP that's well known or some big support from a studio, or you better have had a track record of having a hit game yourself. You're not gonna get traction with a major major publisher just because you're walking in with an idea. You gotta have something behind it that makes sense. So if you're not one of those two, you better start thinking in terms of one of the secondary or tertiary ways of get, getting games made, a little less expensive, a little, a little less risk associated with it, maybe more like Steam, maybe more like mobile, maybe more like some sort of flash game to, to get it underway, if, if, that's, if that's really what you're trying, trying, to, trying to accomplish. And in those cases, sometimes you actually don't need a publisher. If you can fund it yourself, a publisher is either money or marketing behind you, but there are examples on Steam of people that essentially are self-published. There are self-published examples, fewer or less these days, but there are examples on mobile as well, or you could do it on, on, on Flash too. A lot of this is coming down to just what are you trying to accomplish and how much can you afford to, to do yourself or take on in order to uh, get the project done, or do you really need out external financing and then you'll have to go to either a publisher or I suppose a, a Kickstarter. But, but frankly, an original idea just on the back of a napkin, unless you've got some property in the work that's coming out, or you've got a history of having successfully made a game before, it's going to be tough to get financing. Well, and of all the largest console publishers, and in thinking about them, you can count them on one or two hands, how many of those guys have licensed IP as part of their main stable, if you can think just, about it. Just, just the big ones, right. No, not, not, even, not even the big not ones even anymore. anymore. Well, I mean, right? used to be. you not consider Warner a big player? I mean, I do, as a publisher. Well, no, I get, I get they own their IP, a license. little different. <laughs> well, like, right. EA is obviously putting a lot into the Star Wars Agreed. license. Right, so, and, yeah. and if they are, that's one, right? If uh, Activision had Transformers and Spider-Man, right? But, I mean, those are not small IP. So looking as a producer saying, hey, I want to get Warner, you know, Activision to go pick up my next film, and they've only got those two, and those aren't really their focus. Destiny and Call of Duty are blowing those away. You know, Skylanders is going to be so much bigger than anything that they're going to do with a licensed property. So managing your expectation, not to deflate it, but to understand that walking in and pitching Activision is not necessarily in your best interest if you're walking in with a 5 or $10 million film that's really cool, that, that's going to be a different negotiation. It may happen, but... We don't see that happening. And but at the same time, you're looking at, you know, mobile and tablet space and some of these other spaces where the time and the cost to develop these things are more in line with that. So looking at this, like so if we're looking at a console, right now, minimum two to three years for development, right? For a larger console game. Right? A lot of the larger games, Call of Duty is now on a three year development cycle. How long was Titanfall? It was like three years? Maybe more maybe, um, maybe more? Well, Let's say three. Let's say three, <laughs> right? So if you have a film that's going to get... We were a little get... distracted with some other stuff in the meantime. I don't know. I have no idea what you could be talking about there. So <laughs> if your film is going to get greenlit, not just the development of the film, but actually when it gets greenlit, and someone says, okay, we're going to make this movie, that's going to be 14 months, 16 months, 18 months. So if I'm greenlighting the film, and then I say, okay, game, go. Right? And that's assuming we've got a team in place, we've got the technology in place, we've got this idea of what we're going to do, and I've got 14 to 18 months, there's going to be a problem. There's a disconnect there, right? And if my film was a 10 or $20 million film and I've got a $60 million video game, that math doesn't make sense. Now let's look over at maybe mobile, right? So mobile, now you're talking something that could cost a million, $2 million. It might only take... 8, 12, 14 months, and there's some really good stuff on the iPad and some other platforms that's pretty decent. And so if you look at, you know, Unreal has their engine, their game engines available for developers to develop on these platforms now. So now if you have a platform that can take 14 or 16 months and you could pay for it as part of your budget and you're raising your equity for your film anyway, why are you going to go to a publisher to get that money and have them tell you how to make your game when you already own that IP? So these platforms are starting to open up new opportunities for us. And I think now I'm hoping you guys are starting to see why I want you guys to see this landscape. Because if you've got a really cool idea, I don't want you to just have your, your ideas deflated by saying, I'm not going to put it on the Xbox. 
that may not happen, maybe not right now, but there are so many opportunities out there that are opening up so many more doors and, and making so much more money.